And just when you think they're about to break apart, ducks, ducks fly, fly together. together. And when the wind blows hard and the sky is black, ducks fly together. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movie sequels that were better than the original. My name is Jeff. It's Hefe, man. Come to me, son of Jarrell. Kneel before Zod. She's alive. Alive! For this list, we'll be looking at the second entries of various franchises that surpassed their original films in quality. The bigger the disparity between the installments, the higher the ranking. Since we're only looking at direct sequels, reboots and revisitings like Mad Max Fury Road will not be considered. We also won't be looking at any animated movies because they deserve a list of their own. What are some of your favorite movie sequels? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes Although Rise of the Planet of the Apes was a surprisingly decent reboot of the classic sci-fi series, its origin story plot left something to be desired. Incoming director Matt Reeves brought that something with Dawn in 2014. He created a bleak post-apocalyptic world in which the surviving members of the human race clash with the burgeoning ape society. Apes! Do not want war! But will fight if we must! By placing more emphasis on the apes, the film offered a compellingly nuanced contrast between apes and humans. The movie also had a political storyline worthy of the lead ape Caesar's name. And it was absolutely thrilling to boot. We mean, come on, apes on horses, anyone? <laughs> Keeping the momentum, the series would only get better again with 2017's War for the Planet of the Apes. Number 19, The Hunger Games Catching Fire. There wasn't much to complain about when The Hunger Games was adapted in 2012, especially since they nailed the casting of Katniss Everdeen with Jennifer Lawrence. But Gary Ross's gorilla-esque direction to the action sequences was somewhat frustrating. Another sequel to be improved by a new director, Catching Fire benefited hugely from the addition of Francis Lawrence, who by the way is not related to Jennifer. His brisk, crisp visuals gave the games the cinematic treatment they so rightly deserved. In addition, this is where the series started to see big picture and incorporated a slew of fresh faces to make the Rebellion subplot that much more dynamic. You have been our mission from the beginning. The plan was always to get you out. Half the tributes were in on it. This is the revolution, and you are the Mockingjay. It's just a shame the bar wouldn't continue to rise in the other sequels. Number 18, 22 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street was the comedic reboot we never knew we needed back in 2012. The unexpectedly hilarious pairing of Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum made for a kinetic film. Since the high school setting was subversive and fun, the idea of taking the pair to college didn't seem too avant-garde. You two sons of bitches are going to college. Yes, no! Directors Phil Lord and Christopher Miller injected the sequel with the same levels of comedic freshness. They also poked fun at the process of sequel making in a similarly shrewd wink-wink kind of way. So now this department has invested a lot of money to make sure Jump Street keeps going. We've doubled their budget, as if spending twice the money guaranteed twice the profit. <laughs> Even if the movies remain tied in those estimations, the end credit sequence at the end of 22 Jump Street breaks it with the hilariously endless slew of fake sequels. Work hard, play hard, you may not want to quit your day job. Undercover, on the loose, don't let her recognize your face card. Number 17, Gremlins 2, The New Batch. This one might be a little controversial, as the first film is an esteemed classic, but hear us out. The first Gremlins proved to be a solid introduction to the title creatures with a relatively simple plot and execution. But Gremlins 2 saw the full realization of the concept. Unencumbered by origin story dynamics, 
The sequel devoted its attention to poking fun at consumerism and corporate culture. Oh, we may stumble along the way, but civilization, yes. The Geneva Convention, chamber music, Susan Sontag. Everything your society has worked so hard to accomplish over the centuries, that's what we aspire to. We want to be civilized. Allegories aside, the film is also simply more enjoyable. The meta-commentary alone reaches Deadpool levels of self-awareness. Okay, you guys, listen up. People pay good money to see this movie. When they go out to a theater, they want cold sodas, hot popcorn, and no monsters in the projection booth. Do I have to come up there myself? It unfortunately floundered at the box office, so the prospects of a third film have remained in our hopes and dreams for three decades and counting. Number 16, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. How did this not get another sequel? Though 2004's Hellboy wasn't the most faithful comic book adaptation, it was wholly Guillermo del Toro's creative vision come to life. Hellboy 2 The Golden Army took his vibrant vision even further. Del Toro's signature dark fantasy stylings become more dynamic and pronounced. Furthermore, the interpersonal relationships felt much more relatable and endearing. You came along, just like a star, and brightened my day. The prospect of Hellboy and Liz starting a family, or the adorable courtship between Abe Sapien and the Princess Nuala, were particular standouts. The sequel also planted the seeds of a fascinating conclusion to the would-be trilogy that, as we mentioned, never came to fruition. It is his destiny to bring about the destruction of the Earth. Not now, not tomorrow, but soon. Instead, we were treated to a lifeless reboot. Number 15, Bride of Frankenstein. It's difficult to make a case for a sequel to one of the landmark horror movies in cinema history, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. Before further sequels ran the team-up concept into the ground by pairing the green meanie with the Wolfman or Abbott and Costello, there was Bride of Frankenstein. She's alive, alive! This sequel delved further into the fractured psyche of the monster to tremendous effect. Taking place immediately after the events of the first, the monster desperately seeks companionship now that he's been villainized by society. This ushers in the advent of the Bride, an equally iconic creature with fabulous hair. Her presence further fleshes out the first film's themes and provides a cathartic resolution to the saga. Number 14, Superman 2. Before Spider-Man 2 or X2, the superhero sequel to end all superhero sequels was Superman 2. Granted, the first film did make us believe that a man could fly, but this one made us believe that and then some. <gasps> I believe this is your floor. Oh, thank God. While the film was essentially the second half of one film rather than a direct sequel, Superman 2 still stands out in terms of excitement and character development. Superman is given more of a physical match than a 70s era Lex Luthor could ever dream of when Zod and his Kryptonian followers return. At one point, we even feared for Superman's life. Come to me, son of jor -El. Kneel before Zod! There's also more of an interesting relationship between Lois and Clark as the former discovers the latter's alter ego. Number 13, Blade 2. Another Guillermo del Toro feature, Blade 2 proved to be a sharper and more agile adventure for the Daywalker. The best thing about the trilogy will always be Wesley Snipes as Blade. Fortunately, the second installment seemed to nail his characterization more than the first. You obviously do not no, you are king with. The film also brought back Chris Christopherson as Abraham Whistler, while adding Donnie Yen, Del Toro mainstay Ron Perlman, and Daryl Dixon himself, Norman Reedus. In typical sequel fashion, the film also ups the ante in terms of plot. As the Reaper virus threatens to upend both the vampire and human societies, enemies are forced to work together to quash it. It's a bucket full of bloody fun. Number 12, Evil Dead 2. The first two entries in the Evil Dead franchise are both cult hits, but the second was lucky enough to get a much larger budget. This allowed for even more campiness, better gore, and enhanced special effects. 
The sequel further transcends the original by adding in a ton of horror comedy that cemented Bruce Campbell's legendary B-movie status. That's right. Who's laughing now? Of course, its budget was still small in comparison to other mainstream films, so it manages to retain the sense of a gritty and twisted reality that only low-budget movies can achieve. Groovy. Number 11. X2 – X-Men United An already large cast of superheroes gets even bigger, and this sequel has the plot to go with it. You picked the wrong house, <laughs> X2 deals with issues that resonate in real life, and that, combined with the refined action and improved performances, makes for a surprisingly grounded comic book movie. It never gets bogged down by the serious points it addresses, however, as the fight scenes are exceptionally choreographed. And we simply can't talk about the excellence of this sequel without mentioning the White House Nightcrawler scene, which is easily one of the best sequences in the entire X-Men franchise. Oh my God. Number 10. Captain America – The Winter Soldier So many superhero films sacrifice intimate action for sweeping scenes of mass destruction, but that is not the case in Cap's second solo film. Are you kidding me? He's headed for the garage. Lock down the bridge. This movie has been compared to a Bourne-style thriller where the hero gradually unravels a mystery, filled with a building intensity all along the way. Unlike the first film, there's a greater emphasis on tight hand-to-hand -hand combat that feels like a much better fit for the leader of the Avengers. There's also far more personal conflict than in most other Marvel movies, as Cap faces off against his best friend, Bucky Barnes. Bucky? Who the hell is Bucky? Number 9. Paddington 2 How do you follow up what is essentially a perfect film? Simple with a more perfect film. All kidding aside, Paddington 2 cleared the already extremely high bar set by the original by being more enjoyable and delightful. The prison sequence alone is already one of the funniest and most endearing parts of any movie in the last decade. Oh, it's only one red sock. What's the worst that can happen? And though Nicole Kidman proved to be a fantastic villain in the first film, Hugh Grant absolutely steals the show here, to the point that he had many people calling for awards consideration. Indeed, Magwitch. And we gave quite a performance, you and I. Just like the old days. Not convinced, the film holds the rare distinction of earning a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 8. Mad Max 2 – The Road Warrior The Mad Max series has a pretty simple list of features that make it so good. Crazy action, gorgeous cinematography, and a hero anyone can get behind. The sequel to the first movie has all of those elements in abundance, and takes the story beyond the simple detailing of the apocalypse. But nothing could stem the avalanche. Their world crumbled. The cities exploded. It's an exciting ride, with action that keeps up its intensity for so long it leaves moviegoers satisfyingly exhausted. Plus, it has one of the most exhilarating climaxes ever put on screen. Hey, it's been a pleasure doing business with you, but I'm leaving. Number 7. Star Trek II – The Wrath of Khan One of the greatest challenges any Star Trek filmmaker will face is pleasing the devoted followers of the franchise. Are you out of your fucking mind? While the first film adaptation received mixed reviews, it was enough of a hit to warrant a sequel, restoring the faith of the fans with a successful film that pretty much saved the series. Sulu, divert all power to phasers. Too late. Hang on! The story in Wrath of Khan is incredibly strong, epic even, as it brilliantly brings back the iconic characters and a memorable foe from the original TV series. There was a lot of pressure to right the wrongs of the previous attempt, and it does that and much more. Live long and prosper. Number 6. Spider-Man 2 This acclaimed superhero film isn't burdened by the need to tell an origin story, allowing it the opportunity to delve further into the characters we met in the first film. What's more, we're introduced to Dr. Octopus, a wonderfully insane evil genius who was brought to life by a phenomenal Alfred Molina performance and Oscar-winning special effects. Something in my head. 
something talking. With a more sinister and captivating villain, better cinematography, and more compelling action sequences overall, it's clear that the sequel greatly improves upon the original. I want a life of my own. You've been given a gift, Peter. With great power comes great responsibility. It's a trend that the third film couldn't live up to. We're looking at you, emo Peter Parker, making the middle film the best in the trilogy. Cool Spidey outfit. Thanks. Number 5. The Godfather Part 2 How do you follow in the footsteps of a cinematic masterpiece? Sure, the first Godfather is a landmark achievement, and no one's taking that away from it. But The Godfather Part 2 is simply superb storytelling. I'm your older brother, Mike, and I was stepped over! That's the way Pop wanted it. It ain't the way I wanted it! I can handle things, I'm smart! Not like everybody says! Like dumb, I'm smart and I want respect! The film juxtaposes the present-day evolution of now Don Michael Corleone with the origin of his father Vito in the early 1900s. At the same time, the story is layered with familial themes that feel all the more potent and reflective. As Vito's rise in power mirrors Michael's descent into corruption, we're left wholly satisfied by the film's conclusion. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. On an award standpoint alone, Part 2 won a whopping six Oscars compared to the first film's three, while becoming the first sequel to win Best Picture. Number 4. The Dark Knight Batman Begins establishes the dark tone that defined Christopher Nolan's trilogy, but its sequel perfects the recipe. Where's Dent? You have all these rules and you think they'll save you. Add in a legendary performance by Heath Ledger, and you have the makings of one of the best comic book films of all time. Why so serious? The Dark Knight even transcends the superhero genre and is considered a magnificent crime thriller in its own right. The action sequences are mostly created with practical effects, making for a sense of realism that no other movie of its kind has yet been able to emulate. Drop the gun. Oh, sure, you just take off your little mask and show us all who you really are. Number 3. Aliens The unlucky Ripley has to fight the Xenomorphs once more in this action-heavy follow-up to Ridley Scott's acclaimed sci-fi horror flick. There are more aliens, more guns, more classic one-liners, and somehow even more intense scares than the first film. Did IQs just drop sharply while I was away? It must have been incredibly difficult to improve upon a movie that's considered a cinematic masterpiece, yet James Cameron manages to take the greatest elements from the first film, enhances them, and turns the result into one of the best action movies of the 1980s. Don't be gone long, Alan. Number 2. Star Wars Episode V The Empire Strikes Back Even though A New Hope received higher praise upon initial release, the second film in the original space opera trilogy has come to be accepted as the best in the series. Alright, I'll give it a try. No! Try not! Do! Oh, do not. There is no try. Its aesthetics, complex characters, and iconic dialogue set the standard for an entire generation of filmmakers, and the story is more intriguing than almost any other movie at the time. Oh, you make it so difficult sometimes. I do, I really do. It's one of the highest grossing films ever, and is a memorable picture for many reasons, including the unforgettable twist in its final act. We're pretty sure you know what we're talking about, and that's because this film is simply inescapable. That's impossible! Search your feelings, you know it to be true. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Annabelle Creation, much scarier than its inanimate predecessor. What do you need? Your soul! Hot Shots Part 2. The title alone is hysterical. I love you in Wall Street! The Wolverine, a big improvement on his origins film. <laughs> Rush Hour 2, the concept works better as a globetrotting adventure. I did this. What do this mean, man? Speak English to me. That means I go this way and you go this way. I go that way, you go this way. Yes. 
Okay. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Terminator 2 Judgment Day Once again, James Cameron manages to take an already phenomenal picture and improve upon it. The T-1000 has the same files that I do. It knows what I know. It might anticipate this move. I don't care, we gotta stop her. The first Terminator is essentially a stalking horror flick, but the second becomes more or less a definitive action film. The T-1000 is one of the most menacing villains ever, and the CGI that created the character revolutionized the special effects industry. Put your on me, huh? Hurry! The film took home four Academy Awards, which was fitting recognition for a movie that managed to expand upon its predecessor's story while also being a triumph in filmmaking. Plus, what other franchise could turn the original villain into the hero and do it so convincingly? We rest our case. Hasta la vista, baby. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.